Now, uh, so I'm going to speak to both the new people at the church and, and the old heads. This is four years that we're celebrating. Four, as you know, is the number uh, what I would call, and I think if you check me out, Jew, Jewish numerology, four is the number of witnessing. It's the number of evangelism. Someone mentioned earlier, I think it was Brother Darrell, or maybe it was, it was you, uh, Minister John, one of these ministers said, the north, the south, and the east, and the west, the four corners of the world. You know, you've got four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So four is a significant number. My dear, precious niece, Autumn, I think her birthday is 4-4, four, four, if I remember correctly, and, and my nephew, Walter, is 4-6, which is actually, if I'm correct, the day Jesus came into Jerusalem. Is that right? Pastor will check me on that one, but I believe it was 4-6 in 33 AD. So 4 is a significant number, and this is a significant number for your church. Amen? Amen. Amen. I sensed that before I was giving this message that God is doing a shifting. We're seeing in this country there's a shifting. There's a reshuffling that's happening. Oh, y'all gonna be quiet on the other day. I thought this was true. Yes. Oh, yes. today. I said four is a significant number, and I said that this country's going through a shifting. Yes. There were some people we expected to get in office that didn't get in office. And there was others we didn't expect that got in office. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about political parties and who you vote for, who I vote for, all this. It's really irrelevant because my king is Jesus and I think yours is too. Right? But what I want to say is that in the natural, what you're seeing is a bunch of shifting happening. Things that were expected are not happening. Come on now. And what I'm saying to you, you are, your, your name, how many of y'all, let me see a show of hands. How many of y'all know where the name Truth and Love comes from? Now we can pass it around. You know, how many of y'all, raise your hands, let me see. Oh, let me do it this way. How many of y'all don't know where your name comes from. Thank you. That's it. All right. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 4.15. That we henceforth be no 14. That we henceforth be no more child, children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine. You know that verse. By the slight of men, cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth. May grow up into all things. The truth in love may grow up into him, who him, Jesus Christ, in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together, continues on. Today I want to, uh, my other verse for you, and this is really the verse, the title of this message is, Falling in Love. Someone say, Falling in Love. Falling in Love. Falling in Love. Who was that, John Legend? Falling in Love. Is that John Legend? Falling in love with, with Jesus. Jesus. Come on. And wait, subtitle again. Again. And again. And again. Thank you. Oh, y'all, y'all with me now. I know I got, I got the right thing. I got the right church here. Okay. Revelations two and four. If we since I'm talking to the Ephesians, Revelations two and four. John talking to getting a revelation from Jesus Christ, talking to the Ephesian church. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider, contemplate, think. How far you have fallen? Repent, turn around. That's not a bad word. Repent is not a bad word. If you're in, COVID, if you're in sports or and in, in you have a job somewhere and they say, hey, you didn't do this right, go back and redo it again. That's what this redo. Redo. Someone say repent. Repent. Redo. Redo. And do the things you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But I have this favor in you. He talks about how you hate the practices of false believers, the, the Nicolaitans. And then he says, uh, whoever has ears, let him hear. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Pastor, uh, and probably in year two of this church, talked about keys to the kingdom. Keys which will unlock your ability to, to attain a goal. That if you were to study these keys, and I'm only talking about two of them, you were to study these keys, that you could achieve just about anything that you want to do. The first two keys were purpose and planning. Mm -hmm. Purpose is the why, why you do something. Planning is the how. Amen? Amen. Okay, all right. Falling in love with Jesus. Why Jesus? First key. 
Why Jesus? So I'm going to say, why Jesus? Why Jesus? Look to your neighbor. Why Jesus? Why Jesus? I say this because in this day and age, when you have black Hebrews, yellow Hebrews, when you got Jehovah's Witness, and I'm not trying to slam anybody, but you need to be aware, Ephesian Church, that there's a bunch of false doctrine out there that is so close to the truth, but it misses that one key thing. Why fall in love with Jesus? Why fall in love with Jesus? I ask myself, if I can use these keys of the kingdom instead of pursuing a thing and pursue Jesus, I wonder what the outcome would be. Why fall in love with Jesus? Well, the question reveals purpose. And the purpose we're trying to find in Jesus Christ. Why are we here? Why is Jesus important? Why is he the one? I was watching TVN one day, and I think I actually talked about this one time. And uh, a preacher got up and asked everybody, he went around the room and he said, what's the highest name of God? Y'all heard me say, talk about this before? What's the highest name of God? And he went around. Let's do it right now. Someone tell me the highest name of God. Really quick. Hey, what was it? Elohim. Elohim. Go ahead. Keep going. Adonai. Adonai. Yes, keep going. Yahweh. Yahweh. Like that. What else? Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. Okay. This is what this preacher did. Now watch what. Someone in the crowd in the back said, Jesus. And he said, yeah, that's his salvation name, but keep going. Y'all ever hear that the sound effect when they take a record and it goes, <laughs> my spirit said, what did he just say? <laughs> Jesus. And it was almost like he said, yeah, that's his, that's the salvation name, but yeah, that's just God's salvation name. Wow. Said, what, well, what else is there? To tell I got, and I got, it was righteous anger. I didn't curse him out of, through the TV or anything like that. But it was righteous anger. And I, and, but, it, but it made me go and look. And so here's what I did. I went to the Old Testament. I went to Exodus 3 and 14. And yes, where we get the high up from. Moses said to God in 3.13, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask, what is his name? That uh, Then what shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am, higher, higher, right? I am who I am. That's what the name means. This is what, but watch this second part. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am sent you. Right? And I said, okay. So that's the Y Jehovah, Y or the Y B W H Yahweh. Right? Okay, good. I said, okay, so he was partially right. Let's see, continue reading. And then he says later, God says to Moses, This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. And I have promised to bring you up out of your misery into Egypt, out of Egypt, into the land of the Canaanites. Okay, good. So right now the minister's on track, right? The TV evangelist. But then I said, well, wait a second. Pastor taught us that Old Testament concealed, New Testament revealed, right? I said, let me go tip on down to the corner of the New Testament and let me see what's happening in there. So I go there and, then, and let me preface by saying Leviticus 24 and 16 says, and he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death. And all, con and all the congregation shall certainly stone him. Hold that thought. John 8.58. Jesus is in, a, in basically an argument with the Pharisees. And they say, well, we, we, our father is Abraham. Who are you? And Jesus says, very truly, before Abraham was, I am. I am. I am. Wait a second. You mean I was Jesus? No. Before Abraham was, I am. Don't you let nobody tell you that the salvation name of Jesus is nothing. Don't you let nobody tell you that Jesus Christ ain't God. I just proved it right there. Young people, I'm telling you right now. Don't let nobody tell you that Jesus Christ is not God. He is God himself. In the fullness of God. Physically well. That's right. 858, I am. And as they, and at this, they picked up stones, according to the Leviticus 24, 16, I just read to you. They picked up stones, said, kill that brother. He has broken the law. But what they didn't realize was that this was God standing right in front of them. And they missed it. 
Ephesian Church, Truth and Love Church, don't miss God in this coming year. You got a man and woman of God right here who's going to preach the truth in love. They're going to tell you the hard stuff, and they're going to tell you the good stuff. And you got to take it both. Amen? Amen. Young people, don't just want to hear the good stuff. Hear what I'm saying. He's going to give you some truth. She's going to give you some truth. These ministers that are going to be ordained, they're going to give you some truth, but they're going to do it in love. Because this is an Ephesian church. It's balance. It's balance. Amen? Amen. It's balance. Hear what I'm saying. So this, this is the Christmas season, right? Amen. In further proof, I was con continued on down into the New Testament. Matthew 1 and 20. But after he had considered this, this is now Joseph thinking, I need to put this sister away. She done got pregnant by somebody else. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm out of here. I got, I'm, you know, I'm good. I'm going to put her away silently. Yeah. Joseph. But he, after, consi consider, after considering this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him. You are an angel telling him what name to give Jesus. You are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. I said, okay, now that does it for me. But God said, keep going. So I kept going. I looked up in the Greek and the Hebrew then. I said, since we're going to go into Yahweh and all of that, I, and I found, what I found out was this. Eosis is Greek for Jesus. Yes. Right. Eosis is uh, basically Yehoshua. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, Yehoshua is a contraction. It's a compound name. Yeh re actually refers to Jehovah. Because in, in English, in the Middle Ages, they replaced the Y's with the J's. So that's why we have Jesus. Yeah. But otherwise, it would be Yehoshua or Yehoshiosis. Okay? So then I said, oh, okay, this is getting deep. So really what you're saying is, God, that the name Jesus is Jehovah and something else. Yeah, that something else is Yasha. Yasha is a verb. It's an action word in the Hebrew. And it means God saved me. God saved. So wait a second. Now the preacher said, what's the highest name of God? Jehovah. Okay, so Jesus, really what we call, who we call Jesus, his name is actually Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I know. I didn't hear my amen on that. Jesus is the Y. Jesus is the higher. Every time you say Jesus, that's what you're, he is the higher. Come on down. Come on, man. He's the higher that Yasha you. Yes. How do you like that? He's your higher than Yasha you. He saved you. Oh, and do you think he just saved you from hell? He saved you from that bad relationship. He saved you from that car accident. He saved you from losing your mind. He saved you. Oh, my Lord. He saved you from writing that contract that was going to end you up in jail. He saved you despite yourself. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me today. Yahushua. Jehovah Yasha. And then I said, wait a second, Lord, this is getting deep now. And he said, oh, you, you ain't seen nothing yet. And then he took me on to all the names. I said, he said, go look up all the names of Jehovah. Pastor was about 20-something names, variations of Jehovah, since Jehovah is the highest name. Jehovah the Lord, Jehovah and my call, Harat, Jehovah Bada, Lord the Creator, Jehovah Chatashi, Lord my strength, Jehovah Cherub, Lord the Sword. You got the idea. Yeah. It's all throughout the Old Testament. Yeah. And in, and in two of the different places, well, actually, I would say three, we know that there was Joshua, the son of Nun, right? Yeah. Same name, right. Joshua, the yeah. son of Nun. But notice that, isn't that interesting? Joshua, the son of Nun. Yeah. So Joshua is not God. Yeah. He's the son of Nun. Jesus, the son of God. Yeah. Whoa, there's a distinction there. Wait a second. Okay, but wait, okay, well, let me not get too excited. And then what about these other uh, Jehovah's? We got Jehovah in the Old Testament, Jehovah in Isaiah 49 and 26, Jehovah Yasha, the Lord, my Savior. Who can snatch the plunder of war from the hands of a warrior? Who can demand that a tyrant let his captives go? But the Lord says the captives of warriors will be released and the plunder of tyrants will be retrieved. For I will fight those who fight you and I will save your children. You all got bad children? Come on now. 